What was this? What spoke to me through him? Which of the Olympians? Apollo in form and with Apollo's voice entrancing the birds and trees, all the surrounding landscape and my soul entrancing, changing, uplifting, until this place seemed heaven and we both gods. I had known and half loved many boys, and yet I felt when I saw him again as he taught me the words of that ancient hymn. He enchanted at my trick of memory. Perfect memory is only a trick. I felt and I wrote it down in my private book. I fall, am made again, am made anew in depth and height, in being and in spirit. These valleys and these mountains dance, the stream rolls on, clouds condense to rain and scatter across the earth. I am cloud and stream, mountain and valley, earth and sky. I am all this and more, both him and me. And I felt, and I wrote this down too in my book. The beams of his eyes have shattered two worlds, nothing but ruins, nothing but ruins. The quiet pool of the mind is now stirred up, and the outward world is burning all aflame. Myself am from myself, far, far away. The weak and feeble soul has left its cave and wanders in the ways of earth and air. People say my poetry's extreme is precious, over-precious, lacking the Latin clarity. The Senate laughed at my provincial accent, and now they say I am too much the Greek. But this boy spoke as I did, understood the purpose and the striving of my song. At our second meeting, he was dressed befitting the guest of the Emperor, and his eyes were shining. I wore my most beautiful jewels and precious raiment. Did I wish to dazzle him? I did. The priest's hood over my forehead as I addressed my God, Pontifex Maximus welcoming his Lord. Also like a father with his child, fond father to this beautiful, this modest Bithynian boy. He was not shy. He carried it off as an everyday event yet with due reverence to our separate stations. I took him out into the gardens. We wandered there for many hours beside the streams among the bowers and in an arbor seated face to face, my arm along the back of his marble chair, my fingers playing with his luxuriant hair, he taught me his Spartan rhythms, Spartan rhymes, his low voice husky now, with speech still clear, the gentle breathing and the lion's roar of these transfigured verses in his mouth, watching each other's lips and teeth and tongues 
as I repeated after him that victorious song. The sun was going down behind the hills, the birds all singing, the small green frogs all choiring, the sunset glowed upon his glorious skin, his eyes were huge. I thanked him then, embraced him, and he smiled. The memory of that smile was with me still when I lay down that evening on my couch, my brain repeating the ancient verse, my inner eye rehearsing all I had seen. His figure strolled beside me in my dream. His hand was in my hand. After our second meeting, I wrote this, thinking of his Spartan rhythms the tenor of his voice, his eager eyes. What other lad so loved his poetry? Staring at me as he mouthed the words, watching each other's lips and teeth and tongues. I have chosen you. Nothing will now suffice but that I own and hold you as my own, but that you take the gift which I extend, but that the gift by him to whom it is given is accepted in the spirit with which I gave, not as a sign of amity, nor in worship of your perfect natural parts, but as a symbol signifying that here within your breast, within my breast, the withdrawn and recalcitrant world of the senses, for but one moment cleared of eddying mists, revealed itself, and, as in a mirror scene, surveyed what yet it might become, and recognized the goal to which it moved. Not bad for a provincial, even if in Greek and not in Latin. I wrote this, I, the emperor, wrote this to that young boy, to that Bithynian boy, Antinous. <laughs> 